why we I'm just having fun practicing Yeah Watch the swift kick, hit, click, stare, watch it sink and paint. Life is a symphony, it's better off you integrate. Bang, bang, switch lanes, the battles in your inner space. Twist off the padlock, now welcome to the hidden place. Bounce, my palace is my throne, and I ain't taking prisoners. Hope heaven is your home, and dismiss you in the history. Afraid to miss you when you gone, and uh, uh, when I'm on, I'll be swayed by the other energy. If it's faith, then it's what it's meant to be. If it's fake, you won't find it meant to be. But don't entertain with a waste of batteries. I'll be to the mountain clip that we go To the mountain top of sea low Let me rap with something we wrote <laughs> Yeah, yeah Invoke realness Won't talk to feelings it Won't stop me, your win And I'm planting seeds everywhere I go in it uh-huh. Running it, DMC Russell Simmons from the mountain top 303, closer to the heavens Can't let what they think of me Persuade my vision in the space where the vision speaks What's only visible in my POV Bearing all the pain, trying to be low key I know there's better days every day I see Just cause you got a little fame, don't be your B.O.G Hot rhythm like, so I keep my head up Till the doves fly, and I keep my head up When the doves cry, candlelight lit up When no sunshine, when the battle Every time I wake up, see the sunrise Yeah, 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 yeah Integrated now, uh, but elevated now uh, Yeah, hella hell now Don't be swayed by the other energy if it's faith, then it's what it's meant to be. If it's fake, you won't find it meant to be. But don't entertain with a waste of batteries. I'll be off to the mountain cliff that we go. To the mountain top of sea low. Let me rap with something we wrote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Invoke realness. Won't talk to feelings. It won't stop me, your will. And I'm planting seeds everywhere I go.
Hello, you all, and welcome to Revelation Church. We will now inform you of our Lifeline Essentials. Your attention is key, as this may differ from any church service you've experienced before. If this is your first visit, we welcome and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. If you've already been here before, it's great to see you again, family. How are you staying connected? The information booth is where you can find our Lifeline QR code so you can officially become a member of Revelation Nation. And to those who are watching online, don't worry. You can scan the code too. We love to have you join us online. Beyond joining us every Sunday and every Prophetic Thursday, it's important to keep growing spiritually. Sign up for Power Shot, a daily devotional on realms of meditation led by Prophet Lovi himself. You could visit us on prophetlovi.com. And it doesn't stop there. We love growing middle schoolers and high schoolers here at Revelation Youth. On top of that, we meet in person on Fridays and every Tuesday for Global Zoom Prayer. Daughters of Revelation, hosted by Prophetess Maggie, gather together every first Tuesday of the month, and the whole Rev Nation family come together to pray every first Saturday of the month with Apostle Gershon. Zoom link available. The world is changing all around us, and your help enables us to spread the message of Jesus. You can do this by connecting what matters most to you to who matters most to you. When you give your offering in-house, please write legibly using the envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Prefer to give online? The accepted methods will appear on your screen. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and tag us in your pictures and your videos. Many people worldwide have encountered this house and the message of Jesus, all because someone liked, subscribed, and shared something very real happening right here. If you have any questions, just stop by the information booth in the lobby or visit the website at revelationchurchla.org. Thank you for your attention. We know this will be a service where you will encounter God. The time is now. Your time is now. The Lord has something just for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome indeed. It is, wow, hot look. This is how you know it's going to be amazing tonight. They're already excited and we're just doing the announcements. Welcome, Revelation family in the building. Welcome, everyone. Dre, you look amazing today. I thank you, thank you. It. I'm trying, you, you look good, you look good. Thank you, wow. thank you. And Revelation Nation, we want to give you a welcome as well. We know you look great from wherever you're watching from. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. <laughs> so make sure you are staying active, commenting, liking, and sharing the video. Amen, because it's going to be really powerful tonight. Mm -hmm. Listen, Revelation family, we have some exciting things coming up in April. Revelation Youth now meets every Friday at 6.30, but they have switched things up just a little bit. From now on, middle school students will meet twice a month, okay. and high school students will also meet twice a month. With that being said, we look forward to having our high, schools, our, excuse me, our high schoolers for their first ever paint and chill. Can we make some noise for that? Paint and chill happening. I know, I know the adults want to come, but you can't. <laughs> If you missed out on the registration for that, don't worry. Just visit the website and you can check out the next meeting. You can do so by visiting revelationchurchla.org. I'm so excited what we're doing with the youth. It's always it's something yeah. happening over there. Hallelujah. Amen. And also our singles ministry. Woo -woo. Woo -woo -woo. I think we I think we got a special guest. We have a special guest. Come, Come on, on in, in here. How you doing, sir? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? doing? How y'all doing? Make some noise for the singles ministry. <laughs> What's going on? How y'all doing? We're doing good. Yeah, I think I think you got to tell us what's yeah, going on with the singles. Good. Okay, yeah, I'm going to tell y'all what's going on. So April 19th, make sure y'all in the building. Doors open at 6.30. It's for our singles men's, our solo summit. Make some noise for that. Hallelujah. So we got we got three words. We here for connect, okay. discover, uh -huh. and grow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Touch your neighbor say connect, yeah. discover, and grow. And grow. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Dang. Are you are you preaching tonight? No, I, 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 I'm just gonna be hosting. I'm gonna be hosting this event. Me and Alabama Brittany, we're gonna be hosting for so singles. You know, if, you know, we we gonna make it happen. We gonna make it. Happen. Amen. Wow. So it's gonna be April nineteenth here. April nineteenth here. Doors open at six thirty. Okay. So can they go register? Oh, right now, right now, go register. I, the link is somewhere. 
somewhere up there. RevelationChurchLA.org. That's the link. That's the link. That's so the link. make sure we go do that. Yeah. We appreciate thank you, you so Keith. much. Thank you. We appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> April 19th. Amen. April 19th. We going to. April Thank 19th, you. all right? Amen, singles. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow, God is so good. Listen, if you have left anything in the sanctuary during any of our service, you can make sure to stop by the information booth where the lost and found is. Um, and if you, I'm sorry, you can go, <laughs> you can go get your, retrieve your lost items um, after service. And listen, they only are there for two weeks. After that, you on your own. So make sure you go get your lost items in the lost and found right outside in the information booth. Amen. Amen. And coming up May 3rd and 4th is our Healed Conference. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. So it is the intention of God that each of us experience the benefit of healing. At Healed Conference, you'll come to know the mind of God concerning healing and be equipped to be carriers of healing for the benefit of those around us and the glory of our God. Registration is available in person and online. Slots always fill up quickly, so don't wait. Register at ProfitLovey.com today. Listen, you don't. You don't want to miss this because Not last year, powerful, absolutely amazing. So make sure you go register right now at profitlovey.com. Listen, somebody say tomorrow. Okay, that was cool for your auntie. Somebody say tomorrow. This Friday, April 12th, Revelation will be having our very first overnight prayer. It's starting at 10 p.m. This is going to be a time for us to touch heaven and shift some things here on earth. Wow. Listen, you should already know. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, already know. Already know. That this will not be a regular service. We are going to push in prayer. If you can't make it in the house, listen, Revelation Nation Online, we will be streaming. So you will still be connected. Wow. That is so powerful. Are y'all excited for prayer? I can't wait. I, I'm going to go camp out like right after service. I'm going to just go sit outside. Amen. It's our very first overnight prayer. So we want to give our very own welcome to Revelation Nation. And we want to let you know that distance is not a barrier. It's not. And one thing I love about that is anywhere you are in the world, mm -hmm. you feel like you're here. Yes. Like there's people who watch from London, from Korea, from Taiwan, from Saudi Arabia. Can we make some noise for Revelation Nation online? And it still feels like they're actually in the building because the presence of God is not just housed in this place, but it's being dispatched throughout the world through the teachings and through the prophetic ministry that what Prophet Lovi is doing. And I don't know about you, Aram. I'm so excited to be a part of not just this house, but the vision of God in this house because God is he's not everywhere. Let's just call a spade a spade. He's not everywhere, but he's for sure in Revelation Church because this is indeed the house of of miracles it is and prophet lovey always has something great he always have a word it's a fresh word it's never recycled so are y'all excited for service tonight yes i think they are i think they are can, can we do this i know we're in the house of god but can we stand yes we're about to stand and usher in the presence that's here but it's going to maximize because the next person that you're about to see is none other than apostle gershon thank you for tuning in to revelation church la Hallelujah. Come on, can we give the King of Glory some praise in the house this morning, this evening? Uh, I, I guess some of you didn't hear me. I said, let's give the King of Glory some praise in the house. Glory to God. The word of God says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who is the redeemed of the Lord? Mm. If you know that you are the redeemed of the Lord, then say so. Father, we give you praise this evening. We worship you. We exalt your name above every name. You alone are worthy to receive the praise and glory. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, Lord. Your word calls us fortunate to be in your presence. 
And we know that in your presence there is fullness of joy. So Father, as we lift our voice, as we lift the church before the throne of grace, we also lift every person that is connected tonight. We lift them before the throne of grace and we say, Lord, we thank you. Because as they are connected, it is well with them. It is well with their families. It is well with their situations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to lift your voice and begin to thank God for the privilege and the opportunity that you have to be in his presence. And as you do that, lift his church before the throne of grace. The word of God says as you do that, that you will live a peaceable life. That is what the book of Timothy says. So thank the Lord as you lift your voice and say, Lord, I thank you that I will live a peaceable life as I lift this nation before the throne of grace, as I lift the people of God before the throne of grace, as I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Rada Bazunda, lift your voice, lift your voice, that it will be well with you, that the reason why you came, it will be well with you, that every reason why you came, every person that you are lifting before the throne of grace uh, will experience the goodness of God will experience the goodness of God lift your voice Thank you, Lord, for your visitation. For indeed, your word says that where the people are gathered, O oh Lord, that you command the blessings. So we thank you for the blessings that you have commanded in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings in our homes. Thank you for the blessings in our families. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Father, as we lift our voice, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. May we be located, O oh Lord. May our prayers be heard. May you locate us. May the prophet of the Lord locate us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we've traveled from afar. We've traveled from a near. We are even watching online. May the prophet of the Lord locate us. May the prophet of the Lord locate us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel every attack of an enemy. We release the people of God. We speak the blessings of God. We speak the blessings of God. I need you to lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the King of Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing a new song of thanksgiving 
to the King of Glory. Sing a new song. Ayara baba baba zote deke tata baba baba baba. Mele da da ba sobra na mashanda babi. Eka tata baba mashanda baba na mazota la babi. Raba da baba na mashanda baba na mazera baba. Eke tata baba baba baba. Oh raba zaba da ba sobra na mashanda baba. Eka tata baba 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 baba. Rana mazanda babi re babi. Raba da ba kando raba baya. Mele de 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 bo sobra na mazanda.
worship you in this place, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. There is no one like you. Yes, Lord. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. For you alone are worthy, Jesus. Only through you, by you, and for you are all things that are made, made, Jesus. You are worthy of supreme praise, worthy of all the glory, worthy of our surrender, worthy of the breath that is in our lungs. And we give it to you, Jesus. We give it to you fully. We give it to you freely. We don't give it because we have to. We don't give it to you because we're forced, Lord. It is our response after everything that you have done. Our response is praise. Our response is worship. After everything we've witnessed in this house, all we can do is worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lamb who was slain for us. We worship you, Jesus.
Cause it's your end in our lungs. So we pour out our pour out our praise. It's your bread in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your end in our lungs. So we pour out.
Come on, you're practicing for heaven right now. Holy! Expecting tonight 
but expectancy is the breeding ground for supernatural miracles. I want you to tap the person next to you because you don't know what they're dealing with and say you're standing on the breeding ground for miracles. Ha ha ha, no y'all too quiet. Tap the other person because they too quiet. Say you're standing on miracle ground. You're, you're don't you know where you are? Say you're standing on miracle ground. Y'all gonna catch it by the time y'all get home. Expectancy is the breeding ground for supernatural to show up in your life. You can't have what you say until you see it. Faith, oh my God. We walk by faith and not what we see. Sometimes you gotta learn how to speak those things which be not his own word and you'll begin to manifest that thing you thought. Say we let you
glory
those grateful hands together and give the Lord a shout in this room. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, it's your name that we live high. Come on, y'all. I know y'all got tired of worship, baby. Come on, put a sound on your lips. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Father, have your way and move by your spirit like only you know how. Is there anybody that's been redeemed from some things tonight? I said, is there anybody who's been rescued and redeemed from some things tonight? Oh man, some of y'all sound like y'all ain't been through nothing. Like God ain't had to rescue you from that. He had to rescue you last night. Come on. All right, I'm, I'm, I ain't going to come down y'all room. Lift those hands towards heaven. When God pulls you out of a place of promiscuity or a place from sin, he doesn't do it so that you can just be selfish with your redemption, but he does it so that you go back and get everybody you play with and bring them out too. Y'all too quiet, church. I said when God snatches you out of a place of promiscuity and sin, he does it so you can go back and get some other folk you play with. The problem is some of y'all have been getting redeemed and you ain't sent the elevator back down. Oh, snap. Put those hands in glory. Hallelujah. Song says, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'll never be going back. Type that in the chat, church. Say, I'm never going back. Here it is. Say, you have rescued my life. Yes, Lord. You have rescued my life. You have, you have rescued my life. Yeah. And I'll never, never go in. Come on, sing it again. Say, you have rescued. You have rescued. And I'll never. Church, my response is hey, hallelujah, because you're my redeemer. 
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, your only son, your holy son. Father, we thank you for mercy, your mercy that is new every morning, your mercy that endures all our weaknesses and picks us up and restores us unto yourself. Father, our weakness is always before us, our failures are before us, but also your grace and your mercy is always ready to lift us up and to restore us unto yourself. Father, glorify yourself now. Reveal your mercy and your grace before us. Lord, exalt the name of your Son, Jesus. Restore us in the places of the Spirit that you want us to be. Deliver us from all kinds of evil, Father, that we may walk on the path of righteousness. We thank you that tonight we will receive what is due us from your heart. That every gift, every miracle, every sign and wonder that we have been waiting for, shall we receive. Glorify yourself now and eternally in the name of your son Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How is everybody doing this evening? I feel like you're tired. Are you sure you're ready for the word of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for supernatural strength. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. To be able to minister to you fantastically tonight. Amen. So I don't want to take too much time, but I want you to understand something that the grace of God is available for each and every one of us. And uh, the grace of God, the Bible says, where sin abounds, grace abounds the more. Amen. Now, the, um, I, don't want, I don't even know how to explain this, but most people don't understand the power of the grace of God and why God has allocated grace for us. Every one of us will make mistakes. Every one of us will miss it. If there was no grace, there is no restoration. The Bible says you are saved what? Through what? So salvation came by what? Grace. It is not something we deserve, but he made it available. So when we are failing and we are missing it, sometimes we make goals that are not realistic in the sight of God. Father, I will never again. No, you should pray. May your grace carry me that I never fall again. Amen. I don't know if you're understanding me. What restores you is not strength, it is grace. Amen. I'll say that again. What restores you, it is not strength, it is grace. Amen. When Paul was struggling with the thorn in the flesh, it was a big struggle. He prayed all kinds of prayers. And the Bible tells you, the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. God did not send fire. God did not send lightning. God did not part the Red Sea. There was no angel that came from heaven with a fiery sword. No. God just sent a simple message. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Meaning that Paul, as much as he had served God for so long, he forgot the place of grace. It became the place of strength, human strength. So God told him, listen, it, my grace is sufficient. Then he realized that he said, ah. I will now glory in my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest. God's ability will never rest on you until you understand that you will never be perfect. Amen. Amen. And it is only him that will perfect you. Amen. Until you get to that place, you are not ready for grace to take over. We receive salvation because we have admitted we can't save ourselves. I'll say that again. Salvation came because you realized that mm, I need a savior, meaning I am terrible and lousy and I have no ability to save myself. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Maybe, maybe it's on this side. When that admission came into place is when you realize like, man, I, something needs to change. Father, save me. I give you. You surrendered your life because you realize you are going to destroy it. So when it comes to everything else that we are dealing with, why is it that we are trying to control it in, if, instead of giving ourselves to grace? Why is it that we are doing that? It's because we have forgotten the Savior because he lifted us up from sin. That does not mean that our weakness has left us. He saved that, remember this, we are saved from the power of sin. We are rescued from sin, but we are still very fallible. We are still able to fall into sin. We still commit sin. But grace has equalized the ground so much that you and me can stand and say, I've been born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And you think it's because of you, <laughs> but it is because of grace. Amen. I want you to understand this is a very humbling message and I say it because it's something that I have to consistently and continually remind myself our ability our strength comes from one place Amen. understanding it is only he who can not us Amen. when you understand that grace is the only thing that can lift you you want to prophesy no prayer will make you prophesy grace you want to heal the sick. Uh, no amount of fasting will help you grace. You want to change the world. You need grace. No matter what you ever need when it comes to God. It is grace that is the key. But the problem is people will tell you that we are preaching hyper grace. There is no such thing. Grace is hyper in nature. 
let's let's analyze for a second let's let's analyze for a second because i want you to really receive what god has for you today amen so they say people are teaching hyper grace now tell me what is more hyper right then you have sinned all your life and one second you say jesus come into my life and everything is forgotten what is more hyper than that it doesn't matter if you're a murderer it doesn't matter if you're a thief it doesn't matter if you're a prostitute it doesn't matter what you have done as long as you say father i am sorry jesus come into my life it is done nothing is more hyper than that that is as hyper as it gets whereby god says I am going to throw everything you ever did in the sea of forgetfulness. I won't even think about it. It's gone. It doesn't exist. What is more hyper than that? Now, remember, this has to do with salvation, the most important thing. What about the things that are less than salvation? I, I want you to think about that. Right now, we are worried about family. We are worried about uh, uh, um, daily bread, our ability to go through life. There are things that we are worried about. But all these things are so minute. They are so small compared to salvation. So if grace could give you the greatest thing that you could not even earn, how about these regular things? Let me say this. When the Lord Jesus saved us from sin, okay, when we were saved, when we came to him, we said, uh, we have sinned and we are sorry. We did not make a vow to be better. There was no vow that from now on I'll be better. Now you received salvation when you are the worst. When I was the worst. What makes you think that the blessing you want, you have to be perfect? Oh, yeah. Amen. Now, I don't think you got it. Some of you, maybe it went over your head. You did not become perfect to get the greatest miracle. Salvation did not require you to do anything except admit. Now you are praying for the business. You are praying for this. You are praying. Why are you putting expectation that God is not putting on you? Uh oh. Good. Hello. Oh. Why are we adding expectation that God has no? God is not even thinking. Of, all God wants is, uh, come as you are. Let me work on you. Just come. I will do what I need to do. Give yourself to me. I will finish the rest. That's all God is asking for. But now we have all these conditions. If you if you do this, you're going. Let me even take it a little bit further. I know I'm going on a rant, but forgive me. Let's talk about demons for a second. The Bible says, anyone that claims they have never sinned, they are a liar. Is it not true? Yes. Hello, is it not true? Yes. Wave your hand if you believe the word of God. It says we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Meaning, God sent this standard of, of glory and we missed it. Okay? So we have all sinned. Now, we are all believers in here. We all love the Lord Jesus, but we have all sinned. Why don't you have a demon? Because the standard of the world is that if you sin, you open the door to a demon. Tell me which human being doesn't sin. Are, are you understanding? Then now they'll start to say, no, if you do this kind of sin, no, sin is sin. What keeps you from the enemy's grace? I wish people would understand this. Amen. We are nothing without the grace of God. Now, when people hear grace and they hear the goodness of grace, because that is the good news. Salvation is about grace. When people hear about grace, they start thinking that it's a license to sin. No. Listen, even if you are not given a license to sin, you will sin. You have a fallen nature. You don't need a license. Shake your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. You don't need a license to sin. You don't need a license. You have a fallen nature. You will sin. You will sin. That is why God gave you grace. That is why God gave you grace. That you are sealed because of the blood of Jesus. That you are sealed because of the blood of Jesus. That the Lord is able to pick you up every time you're weak. That the Lord is able to pick you up every time you're weak. If we have this understanding, listen to me. 
There is no realm of the spirit in God you will not touch. Amen. That's good. I, I spoke to the wrong people. Let me leave it alone. <laughs> My strength. I'm going to say this when I'm going to finish. And then we'll go into the word of God. My strength is that I know I am weak. Good. That's so good. Yeah, no, you didn't hear what I just told you. My strength is that I know I am what? Weak. I know that. So I never want my strength to be in the equation. I want only him. Amen. The Bible says that I may decrease and he may what? Increase. So why are you boasting of your righteousness? Good. That is filthy rags. Why are you boasting of your efforts? They mean nothing in the spirit, in the sight of God. When this truth hits you, when you pray, heaven will open. It will be easy to see the Lord, to see angels, to have heavenly link. It becomes extremely easy because you have removed yourself out of the way. Amen. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. And say, Father, today I remove myself out of the way. Father, today I remove myself out of the way. Father, I remove myself out of the way. Father, I remove myself out of the way. I receive all that is you. 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 Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, today I remove myself out of the way. Okay, grab your Bibles quickly. Let's get into it. Amen. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Let's do this. Bang, bada, boom, bang, 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 bam, boom. Boop. Skiddy dip 
Are we ready? Yes. Are we all ready? Yes. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. One more time. One, two, three. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I want you to read it with everything that is inside of you. One, two, three. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may sit in heavenly places. Now, I'm going to teach you a little bit about three kinds of visions. Amen. Amen. Three kinds of visions. Amen. This is a small prophetic school. Amen. Three kinds of visions. Three kinds of... Touch your neighbor, say three kinds of visions. Three kinds of visions. I can't hear you. Shake your neighbor, say three kinds of visions. Three, three kinds of visions. I want you to look at them in the eyes, say three kinds of visions. Three kinds of visions. Look at the neighbor behind you, say, neighbor, I'm talking to you. Three kinds of visions. Three kinds of visions. Three kinds of visions. Especially the one that is not talking, look at them the most. Three kinds of Three kinds of visions. Three kinds of visions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want you to find the nearest camera to you. Point to those who are online. Say, there are three kinds of visions. There are three kinds of visions. I can't hear you one more time. There are three kinds of visions. Now, now the Bible is very specific about this. It says that where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. So notice your survival your overcoming, your ability to be standing continually in the sight of God has nothing to do with prayer, has everything to do with vision. Amen, amen. Because what is making you get destroyed is not prayer. Remember, the Bible says it like this. My people perish because of lack of what? Knowledge. The knowledge that is making people perish is the lack of what? Vision. Because if you are his people, you're already saved. <laughs> so the knowledge you need is the knowledge of the spirit. But the Bible is telling you now, completing that puzzle. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So when it's saying my people perish because of lack of knowledge, what knowledge is it? Of visions. Amen. Good. Amen. So good. I thought we are going somewhere you're going to be. Come on. So if you look at the book of uh, uh, Samuel, it says, and the Lord ministered, and, and Samuel ministered unto the Lord in the presence of Eli. The Bible goes on to say, in those days, the word of God was very rare. They were not open visions. I, I want you to think about that. In those days, can you find it for me, Musa? In those days, the word of God was very rare. There were no open visions. I'm going to say that one more time. Look at this. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious. And the word precious there is rare. The word of God was precious in those days. Remember, whatever is precious is rare. If it's common, it's no longer precious. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open visions. So how do we know God has spoken to you? There must be a vision. Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. If there is no vision, the Lord has not spoken. I will say it again. If there is no vision, the Lord has not spoken. Why? Because every time the Lord speaks, he will give you something to do with your future. He may not open a vision for you, but through what he will say to you, he will make the vision of the future. You will hear about the future. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. When, uh, when business people are having a meeting and you have projection, what do you do? You communicate your vision for your business. I feel like I'm talking to myself. 
you sit down and you say, you see, these are the projections we have. This is how it's going to look. Based on these cells, we are predicting that this... Notice, you are making somebody who does not know what is happening, an investor, be able to see what you see because the vision is inside of you. Amen. We're teaching it. Anyone who cannot show where they are going will never get an investor to give them a dime. When you go to the bank, when you go to the bank and you want to apply for a loan, they ask for all this, your bills, how much you make, whatever, because by what you give them, it will give them a vision. If you're careless with your money, if they can trust you to give you a loan, they will know more about you based on what you will give. They will say, now nah, we qualify you or we disqualify you. When you go to any especially top-of-the-line stores. I've been to Fashion Week a few times. And when you go, you find all these supermodels. Everyone is... Uh... <laughs> but they are so exotic. You're like, man, I'm not... Like, these are not regular, normal people. They are really created by God for the runway. <laughs> Hello? When you see clothes on them, you say, hmm, I will kill that. <laughs> then you order it, it comes home, you realize. <laughs> they sold you a vision. You fit yourself in a vision that wasn't yours. Oh, yeah, that's good. I, I feel like... <laughs> even to buy clothes, they want to show you a vision that will make you imagine yourself. Yeah. Woo. Good. Teaching. Teaching. When you go uh, 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 to any store where they're selling jeans and stuff, especially for women, they have mannequins with all kinds of bodies. You're like, mm-hmm, this is me. <laughs> Notice, they have to show you a vision or else you're not buying anything. Right. That's good. There is something that is called subliminal messaging that is in commercials and all these things, whereby they know certain colors suggest certain things. So they will sell you a burger that is so bad for you. But when you see how the lettuce and the meat is falling, you, you become hungry immediately. You start looking for McDowell, sorry, McDonald's. Where... <laughs> Notice the vision they showed you made you hungry. Even if you will not be hungry today, they know tomorrow when you are hungry, the first thought that will come to you is the vision they showed you. Teaching. Teaching good. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Everything operates based on vision. And I'm not talking about sight. I'm talking about vision. Vision. Two different things. Vision. Every single thing you will ever experience in life when somebody wants to bring you in or they want to direct you, there will always be a vision. That is why when you're going to buy a house, a realtor will walk you through the house and tell you, you see, this does this, this, to make you believe you can live in that house. So you have to judge. Does, do I really feel it? <laughs> but the way they will take pictures, listen, realtors, are, I'm sorry. When you go on Zillow and you see some of these pictures, you're like, mm. you go there, you're like, hey. <laughs> but they knew if they take a picture a certain way, Photoshop certain thing, they will even set the stage in there so that when you walk in, you feel it. Yeah. Notice they are trying to place you within. They are showing you a vision Amen. to pull your spirit into that thing so that you can go with it. Is this making sense so far? Yes. yes. When the devil came to the Lord Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and prayer, what did the devil do? He so showed him what? Visions. Right. Jesus is holding a rock. He says, hey, by the way, just change it into bread. Eh? Notice he's showing him that you don't have to be hungry. If you're the son of God, do this. The next minute he says, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, all this was given unto me and I can give it to you. Just bow down and worship me. The third one, he took him unto, upon the temple and he told him, just jump. Let's notice even the attacks of the enemy towards your life is all based on vision. Amen. Amen. 
I feel like, let me talk to the people online. I feel like maybe I should go outside there to the overflow or something. Every attack of the enemy towards you is all visions. The devil cannot fight a vision with words. He will also suggest another vision. Because when God shows you a vision, his visions put you in the best light, in the best projection, ignoring where you are. But when the devil comes, because he knows God does not care about where you are, God cares about where you're going. Amen. So no matter what you did, no matter the condition of things, when the God comes, he will show you mighty visions that will inspire you to stick to him because in that vision, it will not include where you have failed. It will show the strength of God that will work through you, with you, to receive the greatest that God has for you. But when the devil comes, he says, okay, God said that, okay, let's see this vision. Remember what you did yesterday based on how you fail. How do you think this is going to go? He shows you another vision to buy you out of the vision from God. Amen. So, without a vision, the people perish. So, everything we do is based on vision. When you are meeting somebody that you may like or you are thinking of the future, whether a man or a woman, people always paint the best picture. You go to dinner, they take two spoons. Uh, I'm full. <laughs> it's like, wow, you don't eat. Wow. Whew. Wow, you're always... You'll be calling, they'll be... Then you ask, ah, I just woke up. <laughs> can, can I speak the truth? Yes. You are selling a vision <laughs> that every day you wake up, it will just be. I woke up like this. <laughs> all this, listen to me, all this is visions. But there are three kinds of visions. And I don't have a lot of time. I have 17 minutes. Hopefully I can cover this. There are visions of the flesh. There are visions of the soul. And there are visions of the spirit. There are visions of your body. There are visions of your soul. And there are visions of your spirit. So every human being operates off all these three visions. And then there is one more vision. Now this is God's vision. This is the vision of God concerning you. So we have the vision of the body. We have the vision of the soul. We have the vision of your spirit. And we have the vision of the spirit of God concerning you. Now, the reality is, in order for you to be a fulfilled man, and when I mean men here, I'm speaking about human race, men and women. In order for you to be a complete man, you cannot ignore the visions of the flesh. You cannot pretend they don't exist. You cannot pretend the vision of the soul doesn't exist. And you cannot pretend the vision of the spirit doesn't exist. You need all these three. Because all these three pertain to different parts of your life. Because as a human being, you, 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 as, a, as a man, you are operating in three realms at the same time. You are operating in the physical realm. You're operating in the soulish realm, and you're also operating in the spiritual realm. I, I, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Now, within the constitution of God's vision, 
God has made provision for the fulfillment of the vision of your body, the vision of your soul, and the vision of your spirit. God has not shut those things down because he knows if he shuts it down, what happens is you become a frustrated individual. When you go to church many times, you find a lot of people are very frustrated pretending to love Jesus. Can we keep it real? Yes. yes. I'm just keeping it real. You find people who are shunned, but they are extra mean. Please. You're like, brother, sister, you love God, but why are you so mean? Listen. They mean, baby, they mean. Extra. Extra mean. You're just like, wait. You're supposed to be loving Jesus. Why are you not merciful to others? Amen. Why are you not patient with others? Why are you always aggressive with others? Why are you always so militant? What? Touch your neighbor Say somebody is projecting. Somebody is projecting. When all these things are happening, you have to understand somebody is projecting their frustration. Because when somebody is happy, they'll be smiling the whole time. They'll be laughing. You know, they'll do everything with so much joy. Why? Because they are not worried about nothing. But the moment an area of life is a little frustrated, mm, it becomes extremely frustrating. Sister, you all are lucky I'm saved. Eh? Why are you still invoking your past yet Jesus has changed? Why are you still talking about I'm lucky? I thought we were blessed. Frustration. There is nothing worse than being anointed and frustrated. I'll say it again. There is nothing worse than being anointed and what? Frustrated. An anointed, frustrated person becomes an accuser. An anointed, frustrated person becomes an accuser, just like the devil. Remember, he was the anointed chirab that had no promotion. So he became frustrated and he became the accuser of what? The brethren. So because they are also anointed, they see you anointed, but they see your mistake and they've been trying to cover their mistakes. They start to say, mm, those power, that, that has to be witchcraft. Those tongues are not even real tongues. Where did you come up with this? The Lord told me. Why is he not telling everybody else, just you? Amen. I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying. Why, why, why is it like that? Because when you're anointed and you're frustrated, the only way you can justify your frustration is to condemn other people in order to elevate yourself. So you can sleep better at night. Everyone else has to be the worst person. Uh, can, we, can we keep it uh, real? It's true. You find a pastor that has pastored all his life faithfully before God. Maybe God didn't just call them to have a big church. No, it's true. Some people are called to pastor small communities. Some people are called to pastor big communities. Some people are sent to nations. Some people are not. Because they have been so faithful and they've been working and working and working, some guy shows up with dreadlocks and stuff. Witchcraft, you see? The last days. <laughs> Immediately, their frustration because they have tried to gather people and it didn't work. They never received the vision of God concerning ministry. Because ministry is not your job. It is your calling. Somebody called you to serve a particular vision. So if you go into ministry, I'm going to build the biggest church. You are sent by yourself, not by God. I always say this and I pray that people will understand this. If it was up to me, I would never be a preacher. A hundred percent. For what? Christians are frustrating to pastor. Amen. You will help them today, tomorrow they will create a story for they are the Judas everywhere. Amen. If they don't get what they want, immediately you became, you became Satan. That's Christians for you. No, this is true. 
I have never seen a more disloyal people Amen. than Christians. They will love you today, pastor, pastor, you make one mistake. I always felt something was wrong. Why were you in the church? I, I always knew it. Why were you there? You know, God sent me there for a season. Why are these seasons that you're sent in, we don't see any harvest? Come on. Come on. No, I'm being honest with you. Amen. If it was up to me, uh, I would have never. This is indeed a calling. I love the Lord Jesus so much that when you have to remember, I had a very thriving career. I was doing a lot of big things, a lot of great things. And God just pulled me from everything. Since I was six, I've been trying to run from him. No, I'm telling you the truth. Since I was six, I'm seeing from God, I'm hearing from God, but my goal was, okay, I was thinking, maybe, you know, this would just be something that I can do, whatever. It was never the plan. When I sit with Mike and even Mikla and, and, and some of them that are here, I, God told me about all this, but I thought I could dodge it. If I could just do my thing and on the side I lay hands on a few people, <laughs> I would have been so content. Because I'm not chasing any of it. You know, when people say, ah, you know, these people just want fame. No, I was extremely, extremely, extremely known before this church stuff. I left it all. Left it all. Money left it all. Opportunities left it all. It was not like, oh, this is my backup plan. Now let me go and serve God. It was never like that. I saw somebody, uh, um, I saw this video of somebody speaking about my history that I was, uh, uh, I was this guy that just loved God and something happened to me. So I started a church to prove something. I'm just like, hey. <laughs> but all this is because everyone has an idea of who you are, but only God has the vision of who you are. Amen. Amen. If it was up to me, I would have never. All this was his vision. And because I love him so much, I gave myself to it. Because I'd rather have Jesus than have anything. So I gave up everything. And I chose to follow him and whatever he was going to do. That was always the thing that I said, Lord, you want me to do? Okay, I will do it. I left everything and I followed. I just asked him for one thing. And he says, I will prove that I sent you by what will follow you. That's the one. That, and I left everything, gave up everything and followed. Understand when I tell you gave up everything, I mean everything. 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 A, a, a Prophet Ron has known me since I was in my early 20s. Before even my mid-20s, Prophet Ron has known me. I gave up everything. Everything. At the height of everything, God told me, now come. I left everything. Now, what is the key to visions? The vision of your body is usually concerned with daily bread. Every time you get hungry, you start seeing a vision. Mm, a burger would be nice right now. Mm. Listen. That Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Notice the hunger provoked what? Visions. I'm trying to, I'm, listen, I'm trying to calibrate you to see something here. Mm. Pepe soup right now. Mm. You start thinking about all the, just because you, when your stomach was not growling or anything, nothing was coming. The moment your stomach growls, you start to see visions of, mm. hey, mama's cooking right now. I wish I was a child again at home. You start seeing all these kinds of visions because what? Now, you are provoked to see the future because of the need in your body. Amen. You are provoked to see a vision because of the need in your body. And I'm using, and I'm, and I'm going in the simplest place I could go. You got hungry. Immediately, you saw visions to fulfill that hunger, but it took you to whatever you treasure the most immediately. Either what is accessible or what you love the most. Notice you entered into vision because of hunger. The next vision is now fulfillment of the soul, what the soul wants. Now the danger of the desires of the soul is that if you don't know how to navigate them, you can become envious. Ooh, 
Because if you see somebody doing well, you start seeing yourself like that person. But if you don't get to that place, instead of being inspired that you can see yourself, you may idolize somebody, picture somebody, put yourself in that place, and all of a sudden, because they did not want to be your friend or whatever happened, instantly, you become frustrated and you become envious. You can't be jealous of what is not yours. Jealousy is when you own something. That's why God says, I am a jealous God because everything is his. The earth and those who are in it and everything belongs to the Lord. So God can be jealous for your attention because he owns you. You and me are not allowed to be jealous because we don't own anything. We can be envious. And envy is a sin. Jealousy is not. That's why God says I am a jealous God. We use those two things interchangeably. And it's not accurate. You can become envious and envious gives birth to murder. Envy gives birth to what? Murder. I can't, am I talking to myself or am I talking to you? When the soul is frustrated because of a desire for something, the soul can turn into a murderer because it would want that thing so bad that it is willing to do anything to get it. This becomes dangerous. Remember, Cain killed Abel because Abel was accepted by God. So being in the presence of God doesn't mean you will not be a murderer. Come on. Uh, I, Teach it. Overflow, can you hear me? Let me talk to you guys. I don't know about them. Let me talk to you guys. No, 100%. God comes down and says, Cain, I don't like your sacrifice. Give better. Uh, Abel, congratulations. Oh. So, God, you just want to accept him. Okay. Okay, what about me? Hmm. One day just created an argument, killed his brother. Because of God's attention. You didn't hear what I said. He wanted God's attention. Instead of doing right, it was easier to kill. This is why Christians kill each other every day. That one is false. That one is fake. That, but if you look into it really, you realize that one is frustrated. They claim to be good. But they really don't like their 9 to 5. And they rather put somebody that is known to get clicks so that they can get advertising money from YouTube. I am paying a lot of people's bills, by the way. Because they know if they put me there, there will be clicks. Now let's keep it real. It's true. That is why you watch everything that I do. Why are you watching me? Didn't God call you? You should be doing something. I have no time to watch other people preach, you know, to see where they missed it or where they go. I'm so busy caught up with what God wants me to do. I have no time to watch other people's visions. You didn't hear what I said. Yeah. No time to watch other people's what? Visions. I have my own to see and to do. The third one is the vision of your spirit. And I will teach you how to calibrate all this so that you can receive what God has for you. Amen. The third one is the vision of your spirit. Have you ever just hung out and all of a sudden your spirit starts singing some worship song? Random, you may even, even be in between something really bad. I exalt. Hey, why is this song singing inside of me? My attention is here, but something else is ringing in my spirit that is contradicting where my mind, my heart is right now. God is trying to show you something. Because the visions of the spirit are triggered by two things. The call of God and your desire to see and hear from God. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I'll finish with this. Habakkuk chapter 2. I believe here. Yeah. Verse 1 and 2. Now listen to this. 
I will stand upon my watch. Who is a watchman? Somebody that is looking out. I will stand upon my watch. Set me upon the tower. Notice, the process of seeing a vision is very simple. It's not difficult. Now, there are different levels of seeing visions. Now, if you're trying to see the kind of vision I see when I'm prophesying to people, it is a different approach. It's not the same thing. Where the angel of the Lord comes to me. I know my uncle has seen him a few times. My, my, my mother, his, his sister saw him all the time when he comes to me and he grabs my hand and he will show me things that god wants me to see that is a different kind of vision now to see with the spirit is also possible but that's a different way but i'm trying to show you the general way somebody said the general way the general way you already see in the spirit you just don't know touch your neighbor say neighbor did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know Neighbor, did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know? If your neighbor is looking at you with doubts, shake them again. Say, neighbor, did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know? Neighbor, did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know? Shake, shake, shake another neighbor. Shake another neighbor and tell them the same thing. Neighbor, did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know? I, I can't hear you. Say it again one more time. Neighbor, did you know that you see in the spirit and you didn't know? I don't see some of you talking in here. Neighbor, neighbor tell, tell them again. Neighbor, did you know what did you see in the spirit that you didn't know? Now, now, now the issue is you want, can I prophesy? No, no, no. That is too, that is too, <laughs> that is another planet altogether. But the realm of visions is in degrees, is in levels and is in dimensions. But the most powerful vision is the vision concerning your own life. Is extremely paramount. I'll say it again. Visions concerning your own life is extremely, extremely paramount. It is extremely paramount because with that vision, you don't need to... Uh, uh, um, you don't need... Oh, the hand of the Lord was upon... It's not like that. Many times you ignore it because it is too chill. One thing I want you to know about Jesus is he doesn't make a lot of noise. The Lord is very, very calm in nature. Very, very quiet in nature. Not saying that God doesn't speak audibly or he speaks audibly a lot. But his nature is gentleness. So when God does something, many times you can miss it because of how smooth it will come. It won't come with noise. It won't come with, 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 with trumpet. Do you know why the rapture, people say that at the last, it says, and the last trumpet will sound, right? And saints will be caught up. The last what? I can't hear you. The last what? Trumpet. The last trumpet will sound and will be caught up to heaven, right? Okay, how many trumpets have been there? And how do you know you're going to hear this one, yet you didn't hear the other ones? <laughs> and the last trumpet will sound. And will be caught up. How many trumpets have sounded? Did you hear them? No? Because it's not a trumpet the way you're thinking. I saw one man of God preaching one time. He said, do you know how the trumpet will sound when the Lord is coming? <laughs> I laughed so hard in my spirit. I said, hey, Lord Jesus, have mercy. <laughs> I don't know why people think heaven is ancient. You're thinking people just wearing sandals and horses. It's not like that, people. I really pray that one day you'll be caught up to heaven to actually see it. Because remember, the accounts of heaven you have is from people from a certain time. The only description they have is based on their world. So if they say we saw a chariot of fire, if you see drawings, people literally have a chariot on fire. No, they're trying to tell you we saw something transporting people, but it was self-powering. We don't know what to call it. The only thing they can say is a chariot of fire. Notice these chariots never have horses. 
Yeah. I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm... It's not what you are actually thinking. You have a picture of angels wearing this just robes and... <laughs> it's not really like that. But, but watch this. I will stand upon my watch, set me upon the tower. How do I begin to see visions from God concerning my own life? The number one thing you have to decide is to see your life. You do not watch and see unless you decide. When you want to watch Netflix, you decide, I'm going to sit down and watch TV. There are times you just want to lay down and just turn on TV and just play anything so you can relax, so you don't care what you're watching. This is the attitude of Christians on a daily basis. I'm just going to pray and just, you know, whatever will happen. Notice, there is no intention. And everything of the Spirit happens by intent. Amen. If you're not intentional about it, you're wasting your time. You have to be intentional. Number one is intent. When you're intentional about seeing from God, hearing from God about something, you begin to set it upon your heart. By first of all, understanding that God has the best for you. So you take a scenario that you are in and you want to hear what is God saying about what I am in. That is the primary intention. So your heart begins to burn for, Lord, I know you have an answer to, for me. Lord, I know where you want me to go. Lord, you are the one who knows this. Reveal it unto me. Show it unto me. Remember Daniel and his friends were about to be beheaded if they did not tell the, the king uh, the king's dream and the interpretation. Daniel told them, no, he went to the, uh, the guard and told him, hey, listen, tell the king to chill out. Give me three days and I will tell you the dream and the vision. Notice what made him confident is because he knew this principle. Even though he went where we, some of us know how to go. Notice Daniel needed to fast and pray to know a dream. I can look at you and know a dream. See how we have evolved in the spirit. Yeah. Things that took time no longer take time. Yeah. I want you to understand that. It's much quicker now. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Now, what is the tower? The Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my high place. Meaning, my vision cannot see until it is swallowed up within God. If I stand upon my watch and I make it about me, I will see nothing. But whatever I desire to see, even if my imagination gives me a picture of what it could be based on the word of God, what I must desire is to enter my high tower, my hiding place, which is the Lord. Meaning, if I see something based on what the word of God says, the Bible says, you will be a lender and not a borrower. So if you're in debt, you start seeing yourself, Lord, build me up. I know I'm doing this, but you can open doors that I will start lending to people. You may not even see how the money will come in, but you see what you will do with it. I will pay these people back. I will do this. I will do this. Lord, as you lift me, I will do this. I will do this. I will do that. Now, you need to bring that vision and make it Christ-centered. Now, many do this and they say, Lord, if you give me this, I will never. That is not making it Christ-centered. You are trying to bribe God. Making something centered on God and trying to bribe God are two different things. Two completely what? Different things. They are not the same thing. They are completely polar opposite. So you have to bring it back to the center of Lord. That's why Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane praying before he went to the cross. He said, Lord, if it is your will, let this cup of suffering pass. But let not my will 
your will be done. Notice, he proposed his vision within God's vision. I'm trying to teach you a trick on how God can respond to you. Because God cannot answer you when you are outside of him. God only answers you within him. When the Lord Jesus said, Father, if it be your will, notice, that is what he wanted. He's the one going to the cross, not his father. Obviously, the father has already, uh, um, he was ordained for the cross. He was born for the cross. But then he goes back to him, he says, by the way, if it is your will. I remember when uh, uh, me and my brother Christian were young and, you know, we had the weekends to play video games, right? <laughs> You're laughing at me before I even say what I'm saying. <laughs> so we'll be like, ah, okay, we messed up. So, man, mom's not letting us play. So we start doing all the chores in the house to get into her heart. <laughs> and then the next minute he was just, ah, mom, I'm so bored, you know. <laughs> we are trying to suggest because we know she bought that thing for us. Now we have messed up, we don't have it, but how can we get it back into the picture? Are you getting what I'm saying? So within God's vision, uh, Father, if it is your will. Notice, he knew the exact will of God. He knew it. But he still suggested within his will. He said, uh, Lord, if it is your will, not mine, you. Notice how God responded. God responded by sending him comfort to say that, no, I want you to remain in this place. Angels came and strengthened him. The reason why you don't know if you should go left or right is because it is you asking. You are not in the center of what he wants. Lord, I know I am at a dead end, but I know you did not bring me here to fail. Amen. What way do you want me to go? There is left and there is right. This side, this is what is there. This side, this is what. But whatever you say, if you want me to stay here, I'm staying here. Notice now you are asking him his will based on where he has placed you. Yes. Yes. Now, if you are sincere, God has no choice but to show you. Because his will is to show you. Now, look at this. I will stand upon my watch, set me upon the tower... And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Notice he's waiting for God to talk. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Notice. I will watch to see what he will say. So God will not say it with a voice. You have to watch to see it. Amen. So good. Amen. Some of you may have missed it. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Meaning that when God shows me, I have to respond to what God showed me. And if I respond correctly, then the conversation continues. Some of you have been, Lord, I just Then God shows you a vision. I know I'm supposed to do this, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. Notice you left the vision when he showed you how this mighty thing. You got excited by the mighty thing, but you did not remain to be shown the way. So good. Teaching good. So now you're frustrated again. Ah, I'm supposed to do something big. I know it is something big, but you did not go far enough. Verse 2. I'll finish with this. And the Lord answered me. No, now remember, now God is answering him, but what did he ask? Uh, uh, I don't think you, you got it. I will stand upon my watch, set me upon my tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Then the next verse he says, what did he say? And the Lord answered me. But what was he asking? Notice he asked using vision. And when God approved of his vision, what did the Lord say? Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it. Notice. 
When God shows you a vision, your next step is to know that God has approved it. If God has approved it, set it upon the tables. Now, people think it is, of course, it's good to write a vision of your plan and whatever. That's not, nothing wrong. But this one is talking about the table of your heart here. Amen. Amen. Right? Make the vision plain upon the tables. Make it plain, meaning be single-eyed. Many of you, when you receive a vision from God, you will scatter it into 10 different directions. I could do it this way, I could do it this way, I could do it this way. It's like too many options. You did not stick to what God wanted you to stick to. Now look at what he says. And make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it. Wait, wait, wait. Who is going to run? Meaning that when God is executing your prayer, it comes from the realm of visions. God shows you what he needs you to see. You put it and make it a desire in your heart. Remember, God searches the hearts of men, not the lips of men. So when God is passing, he will come and look at your table. Remember, he sets a table for you in the presence of your enemy. You set a table for him to run. Amen. Come on. Come on. So God will open your heart to see what is the desire. Say, okay, I will run. Now let me execute it because you have, you have settled it. Jesus went to his disciples and said, until now you have not asked me anything. Ask that your joy may be full. When people say, ask in line of the word of God, they don't really understand what that means. They think it is scriptural. No, 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 no. It is within his vision because not everything you want is scriptural. There is no verse that says, I will give you a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> S-Class, S-Class, S. <laughs> Tesla, Cybertruck. It's not like that. But is it what in, within what God wants to give you 100%? Is this making sense? Yes. Stop listening to... Stop listening to people who have no vision. It will kill your vision. Amen. Stop listening to people who are not in motion. They will stifle your movement. Stop giving into your present circumstances because God will always point you beyond where you are. I cannot move you forward if I keep your eyes here. That is why in order to save somebody from sin, you don't preach sin to them, you preach grace to them. Amen. Amen. So the simple exercise is this. I will leave you with an exercise you will do at home. Amen. Okay, what's your question? Uh, okay, go, 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 go to her. Stand, stand up. Respond to our vision and taint our vision um, for us to kind of be, you know, redirected in the wrong path, so to say. Because I get those visions, but sometimes I can see them messing with it a little bit. So, but that's why I said in the beginning, the devil can also give you a vision. Right. What can I? What can we do to keep it strictly between me and God? What can I? Pray? Very simple. The devil only comes in if you're consumed by your physical stuff. The devil cannot as attack your spiritual things. How can he? Okay, I understand. Thank you. <laughs> Do you realize the devil cannot attack you based on your spiritual inheritance? He can't. You are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. The only way you can get is your body and your soul. So if you're consumed with here, the devil has you. The Bible says, set your treasures in heaven where there are no thieves, where there is no rust, where there is no... Anyone who is earthly centered, you're in the grasp of the devil because this is his kingdom. Make sense? Yes. Simple exercise. Before I give you the exercise, remember this. God is not against you having billions of dollars. God is not against it. Uh, let me talk to these people on this side. Amen. You Amen. guys don't know how to receive what I'm telling. I'm trying to help you open your spirit to receive something from God. 
God has no issues making you a billionaire, a trillionaire, millionaire. God has no problem. Amen. God doesn't care if you have a hundred homes. It means nothing to him. As long as he has you, he doesn't care what you have. Amen. Rule number one. Don't be defined by what you want or what you have. Be defined by him. Amen. If you make every, anything number one, God will not speak because you may just want your God to speak. Which is money, which is house. Some people treasure those things and they've made them a big thing, but it's not really that. Those things become attainable easily from God when they no longer move you. So don't be defined by what you want the most. Number two, don't be defined by your past. Because when God comes to direct you, he will not direct you based on your past. He will direct you based on his sovereign grace and his sovereign mercy. Amen. God never reminded uh, Daniel that you are a shepherd, you are a shepherd, you are a shepherd. I no, God, didn't, God loved that he was a shepherd, ignored by everybody, rejected by everybody. That pleased God to lift him. God never hung it over his head. It was a testimony. So God doesn't want you to be defined by your mistake or where you are. Because where he's taking you, it is so far from where you are. That you'll be looking at it and think like, did I really come from? Amen. When you come out of the fire, you will not even smell of the smoke. Amen. That's Amen. how far God is going to. Amen. That's how separated God will make you from everything. Is this making sense? Yes. Number four. Oh, you're paying attention. <laughs> Number three. Very, 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 very important. Be somebody that is always thankful for everything. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you why. Where you are is not an accident. As long as you're with God, you're not an accident. Nothing about you, nothing about your life is by accident, by mistake. It doesn't exist. Every single thing is intentional. So be grateful even when you're sleeping on the floor. Amen. Be grateful even if you're in a car. Amen. Be grateful if you're in a mansion. Amen. Be grateful if you're in a hospital bed. Amen. Be grateful if you're rejected. Perhaps God is preserving you from something. Amen. Amen. If you are in Him, there is no accident. Be somebody filled. With thanksgiving. If you are filled with thanksgiving, hear me. If you are filled with thanksgiving, Satan can never quench your spirit. Why? Because the strength of a believer comes from a place of gratitude. When you say, Lord, I thank you for this and what you are doing, God gives you more reasons to be thankful. Amen. I will see. God gives you more reasons to be grateful. Amen. And you create an atmosphere of abundance because you are always somebody that recognizes everything that God is doing. Ungrateful people cannot get increased because their atmosphere cannot receive from God. In my seasons of dryness years ago, I ministered and nobody would have ever known what I was going through. Never complained. My apostle is here. My apostle knew all these things. Never burdened anybody. Nobody knew anything. I stood and I preached. You think everything is rosy. But I just left it to God and that's all I did. Just loved God and marched forward. It did not define me and I was grateful to God always. Guess what? Turbulent situations can still rise right now. My attitude will not change in my gratitude to God. You've lost a loved one, be thankful to God. Who knows, perhaps if they stayed, they would have stared away from God. We just be grateful because what we see and what he sees, completely different. 
It is only God who knows what is happening in the dark. We know what is on the surface. He knows the depth of all things. The spirit of gratitude attracts the atmosphere of angels. Because the attitude of angels is always to glorify God, to praise God. What actually forces the portals of heaven to open is gratitude. Enter his courts with what? You can never access where God makes judgment without thanksgiving. You don't enter the courts of God with, I have a problem. <laughs> Father, I have this problem right now. Father, you're going to solve it. How you enter God's court is, I am victorious. I've already won. I've already. <laughs> then the heaven says, yeah, this one. Without singing and praising and shouting and knowing that you have made it already. In the presence of God, you get nothing. God is a rewarder of those who diligently what? Seek him. Yeah. Notice you are rewarded for your diligence in seeking. Yeah. Why? Because you know he has the ability to give you something. Yeah. You're not going in there to... You see, God doesn't... You don't go and vent to God and God stays quiet and say, Hmm, they really did you wrong. <laughs> you go to God for solutions. Yeah. You don't go to God so that he can sympathize with you. No. Your approach to God is because I am living with an answer. Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm talking. I, <clears throat> I almost choked. I think I'm talking to myself. Before you do this exercise I'm about to give you, <clears throat> praise God for at least 15 minutes. Let your atmosphere be saturated by praise. Don't worship. Praise. Christians don't know the place of worship and the place of praise. Worship does not go further than your knowledge and your experience of God. Mm. It is limited to your personal experience with God. You can play all the hill songs the revelation worship. What a beautiful ocean. Oh, no, you're not worshiping. It doesn't go farther than your personal revelation of him. Amen. You can have people sing all those things and you, oh, I feel the spirit. That's all you will feel. <laughs> you won't get to a place where you sit down because it is intimate. Praise is the easiest thing to do, but it only needs you to be genuine. You have more reasons to praise God than to worship God. Because worship is based on encounter. Praise is based on his deeds. I cannot worship God on account of my mother. But I can praise God on account of my mother. Amen. I can praise God on account of my neighbor. Father, I saw what you did. Surely you are powerful. Yes, that's good. But I can't worship God and say, Lord, you are great. Look at what you did over there. No, that's not worship. That's praise. Because I am seeing the magnitude of his ability. Worship is simply centered on who he is with you, to you, who he is to you, without doing anything. Yeah. Without doing anything. Without creation, without anything. Just you and Jesus. Who does he mean? What, who is he to you? That is worship. Oh Lord, you are beautiful. Who is like you? When I look at you, oh, when I see your smile, it is different. Yeah. So you can't fake worship. You can't fake praise either. Praise wants you to be detailed on what you see God doing. Notice stars were, and were created uh, billions of years ago by God. Okay? I'm just giving a number because I don't know. But you can still praise God for something he did a long time ago. Yeah. You can't worship him for it. When I look at the stars, Lord, you are great. But do you know how many people have looked at those same stars? But worship is secret. Worship is intimate. But you need to praise more because when you enter into the realms of praise genuinely, you now start to access worship because you start to see him more. Amen. Amen. Because that atmosphere will make God visit you more. And now because you see him, you start to just see him without everything else. Now you can see him. Now you can know him. 
Is this making sense? Yes. This is where you find when the Lord Jesus teaches us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, he begins by magnifying and praising him, not worship. That prayer does not include worship. Praise only. Our Father who is in heaven, meaning you're lifted up. Your name is great. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Notice, it is all about who. Mm, mm. It has nothing to do with, oh Lord, when I look at you. When you read Revelation, you see John having the attitude of worship. To him who sits on the throne. Notice, this is different now. It has nothing to do with the, this. That. Just the person who is sitting there. Glory and honor. Be, notice it's different. Is this making sense? Yes. Praise God seriously. For your personal life. Don't start talking about the Grand Canyon, the lilies of the valley. You don't look at those things. <laughs> oh Lord, when I look at the lilies of the valley. You, you've never gone to any lily. You never picked it up and said, wow. You might as well say, Lord, when I look at roses, I really like roses. Lord. Man, you did that thing. That, you know, you put your ankle in this. I love roses. That's more genuine than to say lilies of the valley. That's not your experience. David could say that because he was always grazing sheep. So he had to go into the trenches. Can we be honest? Yes. Oh, Lord, when I look at mountains, yet you live in Texas. No mountain. Let's be honest. When I look at the vastness of the ocean, you live in a landlocked city or there is no ocean. At least praise God for the lake <laughs> or the river you have seen. Don't fake it. You have to be genuine. Without truth, you cannot worship, you cannot find God. This is good. Truth is the principle. So look at your life. Look at how far he has brought you. Look at your mistakes and how he saved you. Look at your life when you are in luck, he still came for you. When you start now putting those things together, you will find that 15 minutes will not be enough to praise God. Yeah. Let me talk to people who are genuine. You will find that actually you need hours upon hours upon because the list will never run out. You praise him until you feel the atmosphere is charged. Yeah. When it is charged now, you can now start. Father, I have this situation before me. And I already know your mind is to make me head and not tails. Above and not below. But Lord, I'm in this crossroads. What is your will concerning these two paths? Where do you want me to go? You see, many of you come to God and say, Father what should I do? But you're go you've no praise. You're frustrated, constipated. <laughs> uh, people have constipated spirits. They're just... <sighs> Father, can you smile? Where is the... Where's... Face is wrinkling. You have... <clears throat> You know what I'm saying is true. You have too much pain and burden. You are bitter yet. You're, you see, when you start, I, I've never seen a bitter person in the club. <laughs> when music is playing and people are having a merry time, everybody forgets their trouble. You want to have, you have to remember God only produces positive energy. Meaning everything that comes from God charges you up to be positive. Yeah. So you can't go to God with a negative spirit and expect to be turned to be positive. It doesn't work like that. Hello? Hello. If you can hear me, wave your hand. If you can commit to doing this genuinely... There is no vision you have that God will not show you his vision within your vision. Amen. After you leave this place, whatever questions you have, you have answers. Amen. I want you to rise up. Many of you, when you go home, let this be your attitude. 
By the time we get to next week, there will be testimony, another test. Not because you simply received anointing or prayer. No, because now you know how to get answers. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock the door and it will be open. Notice these are principles of the spirit. I just showed you how to get answers from God. Very simply. There is nothing about this church that was strategic. Doesn't ex- I have zero strategy. I have a lot of people who have come to ask me, how did you do it? So how did you plan it? I don't have any plans. He told me to do this. What I thought, I bring it before him. He tells me, no, do it this way. Then I do it that way and that's it. Healed is coming in four weeks. Okay. Amen. In four weeks. Amen. Healed, healed is in four weeks. But until now, they haven't released any flyer or anything because I have not inquired of what he wants me to do in this healed. And I will know tonight. Amen. Amen. I know exactly how to get there. And I will do it tonight and he will tell me what he wants me to do. And it will be exactly like that. What am I telling you this? Because God has answers to give. But we have made God to be a God who doesn't answer. I'll say that again. We have made God to be somebody that doesn't answer. It's so difficult to hear from God. No, it's not true. You have to be extra holy and righteous to hear from God. That's not true. Cain killed Abel and God still spoke and he heard. Just say you don't know how to hear God. Don't blame it on sin. Because how will God get you from sin into righteousness if you don't hear him? How can he call you to follow him if you can't hear him? I don't know if this is making sense. The pharaohs were pagans, but they still heard him. You, you are shanda ba 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 ba. Oh, shata ba 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 ba. Kira pa 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 pa. What is God saying? I don't know. It's a problem. God will send you images in your mind, show you things prayerfully. You will need them together and understand how He wants you to navigate. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. And I want you to charge your spirit. Hear me. And I'm not using this loosely. Charge your spirit. Charge your spirit by thanksgiving. See all the places he has brought you from. See how he has saved your life. How he has kept your life. Where many lost theirs but yours is kept. Charge your spirit by being grateful to God and see how we are going to enter into another realm in a second. Lift your voice and begin to praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, I thank you for preserving my life today. I thank you for covering me today. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for where you have brought me from, oh Lord. The accidents that you have saved me from. The crowds that you have pulled me from. I thank you for loving me, God. I thank you for keeping me, oh Lord. Thank you, God. Keeping me from addictions. Keeping me from sickness. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you, God. I thank you, Father. For snatching me from the enemy's hand. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Father, I thank you for your grace today. Le 
Kura Basan de Lekis de Matus, Vede le Maricos de Le Macaba de Lesitos, Kura Basan de Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, you have been good to me. Father, you have been good to me. Father, you have shown me your mercy. Father, you have shown me your mercy. Father, you have shown me your goodness. Father, you have shown me your goodness. Give me a new song today, O Lord. Give me a new song today, O Lord. That I may sing your praises. That I may sing your praises. Father, I want to enter your courts with praise. Father, I want to enter your courts with praise. Father, give me a new song. Father, give me a new song. Give me a new song that will declare your greatness father i have seen your works i have seen your power i have seen your goodness father let your praises come forth from me father let your praises come forth from me lift your voice and pray Jesus name. Jesus name. Can we change the song please? We are praising God. I'll tell you when we are going to go prophetic in a second. Let's praise God. I want people to praise God. Amen. I want you whatever God has done for you. Whatever God has done for you. Whatever God has done for you. I want you to lift your voice and be grateful to God. Magnify him. Lift your voice and pray. You don't need music to do that. Lift your voice and be grateful to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for healing me. I thank you for healing me. Mele a sole vanda bagande, e kodi anda bazea, meti ando, e panda bagande ano se ina maso, rakata ya bazande, lengondo le dirama, rambaganda masande mi, zete pakande ando ronda, 
Le Panama Gande Vangande Dema. Le Nanana Sandeado. Mandure Ida Makasa Yabaka. Le Preserve your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Mande Vakata. For saving you. Oh, the Nanana Sande.
Lift your voice to heaven. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I am grateful today. I am grateful today. That whatever I have been waiting on. That whatever I have been, been waiting, waiting on. I am receiving the answer today. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and just thank him for the answer for what you have been waiting for. Uh, Lift your voice, thank him for the answer that you are receiving. your hands to the Lord. Say, Father, give me power. Father, give me power. According to your word. According to your word. You said that you will give us power. You said that you will give us power. After the Holy Spirit comes upon us. After the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Father, empower me. Father, empower me. That I may be a weapon in your hands. That I may be a weapon in your hands. To set the captives free. To set the captives free. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, give us power today. Give us power
Okay, let's hear this testimony. Let's hear this powerful testimony of this baby girl. Let's get the music down completely. Uh huh. So that Sunday, it was, I believe, March 17, 18, that I came. Mm -hmm. And that week, uh, you had said that I had taken my daughter to the hospital twice, and I did. And they had told me that she might have a thyroglossal duct cyst. And they told me the only way that it can be removed is through surgery, which is making an incision in her throat. And so she was terrified. She couldn't. And they had scheduled me an appointment yesterday. Um, so that was going to be a month. And they told me to give her Tylenol every single day until the, her appointment. She was in so much pain. And that Saturday before I came on Sunday, she couldn't sleep. Uh, she was. She woke up probably three, four times in the night. We almost took her to the hospital again, but I said, no, I'm going to church. They're going to pray for her. And we came, and her, her cyst was on the ultrasound. It was an inch in her throat. You said that it would go away, and it went away in that week. <laughs> and she doesn't have any... Right after, um, right after service, I never, not once, heard her say that it hurt. Her pain was completely gone. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Now, God just now spoke to me about healed. Amen. 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 This year in Healed, we are going to be speaking about prophetic healing. Amen. As you see, this, this young baby was healed prophetically. The prophetic is what directed the healing. So you will understand how to prophesy while healing. Amen. Now, now, my island is a little different. I will give you details of doctors and all that and these things. But I will teach you how to see the problem where it is located when you look at somebody you know exactly where they are sick amen and also how to go before god for solutions on how to fix it amen in four weeks what what's the date may 4th and hey benny jesus okay there we go can you see that may 3rd and 4th don't don't trust benny trust what is written may 3rd and may 4th Healed conference. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Every time we do heal, there are crazy miracles and crazy things that happen. This year will be no different. It will be better and greater. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. And we thank God for your mighty testimony. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Powerful. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, time. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's about to be midnight. Hey, one minute. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no. <laughs> lift, lift your prayer request to heaven. Huh? Sweden. Hey, hey. Okay, 13 hour flight come. Who is that with the picture of the leg? Who is sicker? Is he you? Come, come quickly, come. There are some of you, I'll get you tomorrow night for the overnight. Amen. Remember, we have an overnight prayer tomorrow. Uh, the lighting is not really good up here. What's, go what's going on? Or is it the screen that I'm looking at that is? Lift your prayer request. Father, I pray for everybody that is here and those who are watching at home. My Lord and my God, you are the God of solutions. You are the Lord and God who perfects us. You are the Lord and God who shows us your grace and your mercy. Father, you have used me just to demonstrate your ability to those who are here and those that are at home that you are able to do the impossible, the incredible. You are able to lift and to plant people in the center of your will. Father, all of them came today not because of me. They came because of you, your ability and your ability anointing that is evident over my life lord i pray reward them for seeking your face even through your servant 
Father, whatever they are believing for, whatever their desire is, meet them at the center and the point of their need. Reveal your grace and your mercy consistently and continually that they may know you are the Lord who perfects them. Lord, I decree and declare over their lives that peace will reign. The peace that proceeds from you. Father, I pray that the blessing of God will reign in their lives. May there be healing, restoration, restitution. May they possess lands that they could not possess. May they enter into places they could never enter. Yes. And may the blessing of God that even brings salvation to those who are lost, that are connected to them, be released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that every emergency has been settled today. Yes. Father, I thank you for what you have done in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Grab what you want to give to the Lord. I want to thank all those who are watching at home and those who are here, all the partners of Revelation Church. You are so special to the Lord. Amen. Super special to the Lord. And definitely also special to me because you make all this possible. Amen. And I want you to know that there is no better place. And I have to be biased here because I don't know what other people are doing. I can speak for myself. There is no better place you can help win souls than here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm being honest. I don't know what other people are doing. I know about Revelation Church. So I thank God for partnering with the church and continuing to make all these things possible. You keep the lights on through the Lord. So I pray that the Lord, as you continue to help the kingdom of God to win people to Christ, that the Lord will show you such an amazing, amazing grace over your life. Father, as your people give, bless them, remember them, those who are watching at home and those who are present. Show your grace and your power and your ability in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come and give to God with dancing and praise. And remember, tomorrow night is our overnight prayer. Huh? Oh, we are going to start at 10. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. So come comfortable because we are coming to pray. Deep prayers. Somebody shout deep prayers. Deep prayers. We are coming to pray. It will be powerful. For a few hours we'll learn and then we'll pray like crazy. Amen. Come and give to God. Come and give to God. Hallelujah. Look to the directions of the ushers as you come. Rejoicing. Singing and dancing as you give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. We give you praise. We give you glory. We celebrate in the house.
God. God richly bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed. You are more than a conqueror. And it is well with you. And it is well with everything that concerns you. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Come expectant. Hallelujah. We love you.